Pimpy Man is back. Oh, my God, Jay, 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 boys, Jay, Jay. Oh, my God, the man got messed up. This is a five out of freaking five. It is beat making time. Next week is E3 week. My album comes out next week. I have to limp it. This is your point. All right, ladies and gentlemen of the YouTube citizens, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, Dash the True and Fun Out. <laughs> Back at it with another Pokemon Unite commentary video for you guys. And before I get on with today's topic, man, this country is in a world of trouble. You know, obviously, we got the shooting that took place at an elementary school of all places. It's, it's really sad. It's really, really sad. And then, you know, you got the shooting that took place in Buffalo. I talked about that once before. I'd rather not talk about the one that happened in Texas at the elementary school. Cause I'm going to get severely pissed off if I do. There's just a lot of things wrong within this country. So I'm going to just say my little two piece about that and I'm going to keep it moving. So, and, and again, one of the things that's wrong with this country is, you know, aside from the mass shootings. Matter of fact, there was a former Fortnite pro player who posted a video and doubled down on that video where he showcased all of his guns saying... I'm prepared in case there's a zombie apocalypse or a black people apocalypse. Now, he didn't say black people. He said the N-word with the E-R. And then he even doubled down on it on the Twitter post. And that Twitter, his Twitter is now gone, by the way. He's no longer associated with Fortnite. And then a few days ago, somebody sent wrestler Alexa Bliss a message saying, Yeah, if I find you, I'm going to shoot you and your husband. It's out of control. But... Going on today's topic, you know, I mentioned the WWE Superstars. That's what today's topic is about. This is a big topic here. Now, the last time I talked about anything WWE or anything wrestling related was when the CM Punk did the interview with Cole Cabana, or he was interviewed rather by Cole Cabana and Cole Cabana podcast about CM Punk walking out of WWE. But in actuality, or officially, he was fired on his wedding day. Well, speaking of walking out, that's what today's topic is about. We got more of the superstars walking out. This time, women doing it in the form of Shasa Banks and Naomi. So, for those of you who don't know who they are, I'll give you a short summary of them. So, Shasa Banks, obviously, both of them are women. But both of them are black women who wrestle in the WWE. Now, Shasa Banks is the cousin of Snoop Dogg. Not only that, she is both of them are really good in the ring. But Sasha is like the biggest superstar that they have. One of them. Obviously, you look at Roman Reigns. They want you to believe that Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey are their biggest female superstars with Bianca Belair right behind them. That's what they wants you to believe. But if you know the truth, you know who the real superstars are. Roman Reigns still a superstar. You can look at Bianca Belair. You can look at Becky Lynch to a degree. But it's Sasha Banks, you know. Without question, she is one of their top superstars. Not just because of what she can do in the ring, but because of her presence outside the ring in the entertainment world. So, there's that. Now, in terms of Naomi, Naomi, husband, I forgot which one it is. It's one of the Usos twins, and they're all cousins to Roman Reigns. So, again, Roman Reigns is their biggest superstar. So, she has some connections, Naomi does. You know, she is married into that family. So, the Samoans, who have a long history with wrestling and with WWE. So, there you go with that. Now that we know who they are, and at that time, the two of them were women's tag team champions. So, let's get on to what happened. So, not this past Monday, but Monday prior to this, there was supposed to be a six-pack challenge match, or however it was supposed to be a six-way main event that involved both of these women, even though they're women's tag team champions, do drop Nikki A.S.H., Oscar, and Becky Lynch, where the winner would take on the World Women's Champion, Bianca Belair, at the upcoming pay-per-view called Hell in the Cell. So, you would think, well, wait a minute. They're tag team champions. So, why would they even be involved in a match like this? Which is a good question. So, apparently, here's what happened. They walked up to the front office at the show, wherever the case may be, and... Basically, they wanted to, you know, they wanted to defend the titles against Nikki A.S.H. and Dewdrop at the pay-per-view. Nope, it was rejected. They was like, okay, so here's what was supposed to happen. Naomi was supposed to win the match. So, there's a lot of speculation going on here. Where, wait a minute, why is Naomi playing to win the match? I mean, now, granted, prior to all this, 
Oscar and Becky Lynch had their own little feud going on, which was pretty much a step behind the Raw Women's Championship, but it still involved the Raw Women's Championship in some degree. But again, they was willing to roll with Naomi to be the next number one contender for the Raw Women's Championship. And then they been okay, knowing that they even pitched the idea of Dewdrop and Nikki ASS, who ASS rather, who recently just became a tag team. Interfering in Naomi's match with Bear, since Naomi was playing to win the face Bear, the plan was to have them interfere in Naomi match, or that was the idea, but that was rejected too. So what happened was what was reported by the other E was that Shasta Banks and Naomi dropped the titles on the desk of John Laurinaitis, who is one of their head officials, whatever, and they walked out. So. Over the course of the past two Monday Night Raws and over the course of this past Friday Night SmackDown, they've been trash talking both women saying, oh, they were unprofessional and they did a bunch of stuff, blah, blah, blah. So obviously a bunch of rumors have been spread around. So one of the rumors was that they walked out while the show Monday Night Raw was going on. And then there was another rumor that the reason why they walked out was because they did not want to work with two of the women as they called them unsafe and unprofessional. Which means, you know, obviously, when it comes to wrestling, one false move, you can injure somebody. So, there was that woman. And then, apparently, WWE was trying to take that woman and say, oh, they looked at Oscar and Becky Lynch as unsafe. While the public look at this and say, are they talking about Nikki ASS and Dewdrop? <laughs> so, it was all over the place. It's all over the place. So, now the word is, both of these women are indefinitely suspended. There's no time to in terms of how long they are suspended. And there are stripped of the women's tag team titles where there's supposed to be a tournament coming up soon, even though there's not enough women on Raw or SmackDown combined to make up such a tournament. So more likely they're going to have to draw women from NXT as well, which is like their third brand or whatever. By the way, they have four brands, so they could go NXT UK as well. So I want to put it out there. Well, now what happened is this. I forgot when this happened. I think this was May 17th. So this was eight days ago. We got a Twitter post explaining Sasha Banks and Naomi's side of the story. So what happened is somebody close to them who is followed by Naomi. So this person was given permission to share their side of the story. So what I'm about to read, I'm quoting, you know, this entire post. So here we go. You are approaching February as being put in a tag team. After both being promised big fuse at WrestleMania, you bite the bullet and put everything you got into being a tag team. It works. You get over, win the titles at WrestleMania, and become merch pressers. Now, I'm going to stop the quote right there. So, let me explain something about that. So, originally, the plan was, or at some point in time, the plan was for Charlotte Flair, who was once the SmackDown Women's Champion, to defend the title against Sasha Banks because... You know, that was the plan originally. But then Ronda Rousey showed up. She came back from giving birth. She ended the Royal Woman match, won the Royal Woman match, and they even teased about Sasha Belair and Charlotte Flair at WrestleMania on television. But then they changed it and said, no, nah, you know what? Shasha Bank, uh, not Shasha Bank, but Charlotte Flair against Ronda Rousey is the bigger matchup. We're going to roll with that. And even though, well, let's be real, Ronda Rousey, is a big time name. Like I said, the company want her to be a big star. The company want everybody to view her as a big star. But again, if you really know your wrestling, you know the truth. Because while Ronda Rousey is decent in the ring as best, well, not, I won't even say at best, at average, she's decent. But her promos are terrible. And she's not exactly at the level of Shasta Banks when it comes to performing in the ring. And Shasta Banks been with WWE for a good round now. She, you know, lived for this and all that stuff. She bled wrestling. She bled WWE and all that jazz. Well, Wanda barely had 50 matches under her belt, even though being with the company for like, what? I don't know, three years. And again, she took at least nine months off to, you know, become a mother and, you know, to give birth and stuff like that. So, obviously, there were some issues in terms of why Wanda got the nod to face Charlotte at WrestleMania instead of Shasta Banks, which makes sense. But let's get back to the crow. Five weeks into your reign, you show up to live television and ready to work. You are told you will be in a main event and you are happy. Okay, yeah. And women has been main event in Monday Night Raw, I think, for like four weeks straight, which is cool. We need to see more of that. That's straight. That's good. You both are then told that one of, will be, one of you will be going over 
from pinning the other. You have questions why that decision was made and how it will help y'all help Sasha and Naomi. Let's continue. You request a meeting with your boss to discuss it. Your boss takes the meeting and everything is actually going well. He understands your concern. The meeting ends well and the match is told to be reconstructed. For some reason, producers got mad about it. You then ask with one of your members going over what happens to your titles. You are told basically that you will just be carrying the belts. They want to use you both to help both women's champions get more over. So, here was the original plan. At the upcoming Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, originally it was supposed to be Bianca Belair defending the Sm the Raw Women's Championship against Naomi, while Shasta Banks was supposed to challenge Ronda Rousey for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Now, obviously, you could tell how this one was going to end. Bianca and Ronda was going to keep their respective women's championships while the tag team champions were going to lose that match, their respective matches. So, basically, they want the women's champions to get over the women's tag team champions, which makes no sense to me at all. You can put any other women in their respective roles, and they can get over just fine. You know, they don't need Shasta and Naomi to do that. They got their own titles. They want to defend their own titles. They want to put focus on their own titles, which is... Not a bad request, but let's get back on to the quote as we're now on the second page. Neither one of you will win the solo titles and you won't defend your tag team titles until Money in the Bank, which is a July pay-per-view. So this story has been going on since mid-May and he got the rest of May and obviously right now May is over, but obviously this is when they were told at this point, mid-May. Then you got the rest of May, all of June and probably the middle of July before the Money in the Bank pay-per-view. I don't know when the Money in the Bank pay-per-view is, but it won't be like the first week of July. I can tell you that. Because matter of fact, some well, maybe, because SummerSlam is late July, which is weird, but whatever. You ask for another meeting with your boss, give me a quote, but this time you are being called spoiled. A producer walks away screaming. He comes back and tells both of you to fix your attitudes. Y'all have a brief meeting amongst yourselves and decide to stand up for yourselves. You go to another boss and make it clear you just have concerns. You ask, why are we even in the match and why aren't other women in it? You ask why your titles have no stories for two months, which is true. Again, so we're talking uh, March, well, April and May, or really from May to July. So let's, you know, or April to June or something along those lines. But yeah, it, it's accurate. Let's move on. Again, you are met with fix your attitudes. So after one final meeting with yourselves and asking others, you make the ultimate decision as a team. It's that, oh yeah, speaking of this, let me get off the quote. So another rumor is that Shasha Banks pressured Naomi into walking out with her, or she was the leader, which is why management is more mad at Sasha than Naomi, which is apparently not true, but let's continue on. It's sad how one-sided is trying to create a fucked up narrative. I'm continuing with the quote here. Also, it was asked, why wouldn't Nikki ASS and Dewdrop in the match instead of starting their program tonight? Naomi nor Sasha talked down about being in the ring with either one. I don't know how that got flipped. End quote. So, there you go with that. So, it's a, basically a he said versus she said type of scenario. And while both of them are suspended, Sasha Banks been living it up, man. She's been partying with these celebrities, hanging out with these celebrities. Like, she's been living it up, like, for real. So, you know, you can't be mad at them at all, man. So, it's a scenario where... WWE, they, they, you, you would think they would be doing a good job since women has been main event in the show. But when it comes to the women tag team titles, which has been crapped on multiple times, you would think they would like try to elevate those titles as well. But nope, that's not a concern of theirs. So yeah, I can see why Sasha and Naomi are upset because the women tag team titles, which was a title that. Sasha went back, by the way, because that title was not a thing. Those tag team titles were not a thing for the longest of time. But it was really the efforts of herself and Bailey, another woman, another female superstar who was injured, by the way. They basically wanted the tag team titles back, and they came back. And they were the first ever women's tag team titles. Champions, rather. So, it's pretty interesting that, once again, WWE shows little interest in the women's tag team t championships. Again... Even though women have been main event in Raw, although we can't say the same about SmackDown, and women has been hugely featured on NXT over the past few weeks. With, on all, well, the Raw and the NXT side is good. 
But at the end of the day, the women's tag team titles, yeah, they need to elevate those as well. Otherwise, why they even have them? You know, they're not going to elevate them. If they're not going to treat those titles with the importance of a championship, then they should just get rid of it. Instead of trying to do a tournament, they should just say, okay, we stripped them of the titles. There would be no women's tag team champions, and they're done. You know, or something along those lines. Then we can say, oh, okay, they're showing their true colors, and that's how they should be because apparently they don't care about those titles. So why act like you don't care? I'd rather you don't care and just say, you know, we're going to drop it because we don't care as opposed to let's pretend we care, but in reality we don't, you know, because you're lying to the general public. So, yeah, obviously I'm siding with my two black sisters right here in Sasha and Naomi and WWE in regards to this scenario need to get their act together. And I'm going to call it a wrap. So with all that said, y'all know who this is. This is your boy, New Jack Aspie, a.k.a. the new Stephen A. Smith, saying peace out, y'all, and I'll see y'all next time. Yeah.